Blink 182's Aliens Exist, Megadeth's Hangar 18. I could go on and on, but there have been many rock and metal songs written on the subject of whether or not we've been visited by intelligent life from other planets, and this idea that we've been reverse engineering advanced craft that we have recovered in secret. This goes back to the 80s. This is not a new claim. But what's fascinating about what's going on right now is that there are people testifying under oath in front of Congress, which you can go to prison for lying, that they have reviewed documents and spoke to numerous people familiar with a secretive program to reverse engineer advanced extraterrestrial crafts that have been recovered, reportedly with pilots inside in some cases that are not from Earth. Now, as you can probably tell from the Rockfeed logo, outside of rock and metal, this is a subject I've been very interested in for quite some time. I don't believe everything I see. I'm very skeptical. I approach this topic from a pragmatic lens. I also think there are a number of people engaged in this subject that are trying to intentionally mislead people. But for someone like Tom DeLonge, I do think that he has acted in good faith throughout his entire time engaging with this subject. I think Tom DeLong is a person who doesn't have any ulterior motives, who wants to know the truth just like all of us. And so in 2015, he left Blink-182 partially to focus on this subject. He ultimately launched something called To The Stars Academy. To The Stars Academy is particularly noteworthy because they're the original source of a video known as the Tic Tac video. And a couple of years later, the government ended up confirming and releasing this video, but Tom's company was the original source. Now, whether or not the Tic Tac itself is an extraterrestrial craft or something we might have reverse engineered is an entirely different question. Just because a pilot saw something doesn't mean they would necessarily be aware of extremely sensitive technology we are testing, but I certainly believe they saw what they saw. So now you have this shocking testimony from this individual, David Grush, who was widely respected within the government, who worked in the Inspector General's office, who again said as part of his job, he interviewed about 20 different people that were familiar with this crash retrieval program that supposedly involved recovering beings that were not from Earth. Now, this testimony in and of itself doesn't constitute proof, but it's clear there are a lot of people that are aware of what's going on, and I think we could anticipate maybe other individuals coming forward and eventually leading to maybe some actual tangible evidence on the existence of these programs, but I don't necessarily hold my breath for that to occur when you look back and you see just how much deception has gone on on this subject for many, many decades. But regardless of that, any way you look at this subject, this is a major win for the people who have courageously pushed for this subject to be out in the open. I think there are people who have seen things that they cannot explain. I think there are people who are shocked by things they have seen or maybe have had happen to them that they can't explain that they're not lying about. And quite frankly, I think for Tom DeLong, this is an emotional subject for him because he's been ridiculed and castigated and mocked for his viewpoints for many, many years. Here's a clip Tom shared just yesterday, early in Blink-182's career, where he's talking to a reporter who appears to mock him, and he calls that reporter out. And then fucking tell everyone about aliens. And aliens are gonna show up and be like, thanks, Tom. Fuck, no one knew about it. no one knew who we were, you know? But you totally told everybody, thank you so much. And I'd be like, dude, no problem, aliens, you know? <laughs> What are you laughing at? This is real shit. <laughs> so you can tell Tom's been interested in this for quite some time. Now, on to Tom's departure from Blink-182 when he left partially to focus on this UFO subject. He gave an interview to Rolling Stone around the time. And by the way, Tom leaves breadcrumbs in interviews. He leaves major breadcrumbs in the things he said over the years, which is why it's so important to go back and look at various quotes he was making at the time when he was going through all of this research and really pushing for this subject to reach a larger audience and to be normalized in public discussion. So he told Rolling Stone in 2015 that he had gotten so deep into this subject and was interacting with high level officials from the government that he didn't even tell his Blink-182 bandmates what was going on. He said, I couldn't tell the band I was working with people in the government that I'm basically being in this silly punk band and being taken seriously about life and national security and special access programs. 
The enormity of having to do that against the gravity of the punk rock angst of Blink-182 was like being a magician without magic tricks because you don't get to pull the curtain back that often and show people what I've been doing. He told Mike in an interview in 2016, what's coming is a world where we start to understand the immensity of human history. We know so little about history as it is. We're going to realize we've been around a lot longer than we thought and we've been very, very advanced. And what Tom's alluding to there is some of the interesting revelations and discoveries related to ancient civilizations that did appear to be very advanced. And Tom alluded to that in a different interview with NME back in 2020. He said, our ancient past is much different than we think. We were interacting with advanced technologies from a very early time in human history. And Tom spoke to Joe Rogan back in 2017 in which he shared, what people have to understand is the UFO phenomenon has been talked about for millennia. There's a lot of different races doing a lot of different things with a lot of different interests. They've been coming here for a very long time. And it also involves consciousness. It involves, you know, a slice of everything. Now, with all of that said, there is an element of skepticism that I have where this is a topic that has been suppressed for so long that is suddenly getting this mainstream red carpet rolled out for it. But for whatever reason, now is the time that everyone is talking about this subject. And Tom DeLonge has offered his heartfelt thoughts on what this means and all of the work that he has put in on this subject, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. Here's what Tom had to say. He said, the UFO hearings today made history. I'm so proud of the three witnesses today that blew the lid off of the UFO secrecy that has been intact for decades. Graves, Fravor, and Grush are heroes. I appreciated the shout out during the hearing, but so many were involved with To The Stars to make this happen. But we've definitely got a long way to go and hopefully there will be many, many more hearings on this subject. And hopefully the members of Congress that are expressing interest in this are actually engaging in this subject in good faith and they're not trying to get publicity out of it and they'll actually push hard for information to be revealed. But without a question, what Tom DeLong has done has been extremely courageous. I think his heart's in the right place. I think he's genuinely fascinated on this topic. He released a series of books called Secret Machines that is a fictional book, but it has some interesting references in it. In the introduction to the book Secret Machines Gods, Tom wrote, we are not alone in the universe, nor have we ever been. The gods of our ancestors, the visitors of recent UFO accounts, the subjects of cave paintings and age-old worldwide myths, they are all real and they are still here. And that's a fascinating point. When you look at various cultures around the world, you go to places like Japan, they have a UFO museum. People all around the world are interested in this subject. People that speak different languages are interested in this subject. And many different cultural texts reference things that are in the sky, whether it's vehicles or figures in the sky. There's definitely a long way to go, but I think this is a great start.